Well, I just got my ride all set up. Sort of. Looks like that thing's held together with duct tape. Let's go skate. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking back on 10 PS2 games that are still fun to play, even two decades later. You have your orders, Captain. Don't put this mission in jeopardy. I understand, Colonel, but I don't have much choice. For this list, we'll be focusing on titles that are primarily still locked to Sony's second console. So if you want to revisit some of these classics, you're going to have to dig out that old machine. We also tried to keep the list to titles we haven't talked about before, but a couple from our PS2 remake wish list might have snuck their way onto this list as well. What's your favorite PS2 game that you could still replay even today? Let us know down in the comments. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Those who follow in my bloodline shall be bound to its fate, for I will risk no hurt to the ring. It is precious to me. Remember when movie tie-in games used to be good? Sometimes better than they had any right to be? At the top of Mount Doom stands The Lord of the Rings The Return of the King, and unlike many future movie tie-in games, this wasn't just merely a cash grab, but was crafted by developers who loved the films and source material. Building off the formula laid out in the previous entry, The Two Towers, Players take up arms as Aragorn, Gandalf, and even Frodo and Sam as they battle their way through some of the film's most important moments, including the Black Gate of Mordor. The game holds up remarkably well thanks to its fixed camera and pickup and playability, and even allows co-op through the entire campaign. They just don't make them like this anymore, and that's a shame considering how many modern blockbusters could easily be adapted. Beautiful Joe. Head to the go go, baby! In the landscape of 2D platformers, it can be hard to stand out from the crowd, but Beautiful Joe managed to do it with more style than many of its contemporaries. With a timeless, cel-shaded art style, players step into the shoes of an average Joe, and I just got that reference almost 20 years later, who's been transformed into a superhero to save his girlfriend after they're both pulled into movie land. Joe is given access to numerous powers with his new V-Watch, such as slow and mock speed, which are pretty self-explanatory, as well as zoom in, which increases damage as well as granting Joe new abilities. With near-perfect platforming and the ability to combine powers for different effects, Beautiful Joe and its sequel play like they could have been released on modern consoles today. This is where the story really starts getting interesting. Come on, partner, lead this to... Beautiful Joe, Joe and, and Sylvia. Sylvia! Mercenaries, Playground of Destruction. What happened to destructible environments? Why is it we have fewer now than we did back on Sony's second console at the start of the 2000s? Mercenaries set players loose in a world they could destroy to their heart's content while taking on missions however they choose. Warring factions will offer you jobs depending on how much of their side you've destroyed or attacked, and the game even features multiple endings depending on your actions. While some of the controls can be a bit finicky and many of the vehicles you can hijack don't have the tightest controls, there's no denying the guilty pleasure of going in guns blazing just to see how much chaos you can cause while racking up as much damage as possible. The series received a sequel, but most agree the first outing is the best in the franchise. Traitor. The Thing. As we've already covered, they don't make movie tie-in games like they used to anymore, let alone games that canonically continue the story and give fans the answers they wanted almost two decades later. 
Returning to the Antarctic outpost, a U.S. Special Forces team is sent in to find out what happened to the research team stationed there. Filled with the same tension as the iconic film, players must maintain trust within their team lest they all turn on one another, all while attempting to discover if the Thing is hiding amongst your unit. The design and transformations of the Things are still horrifying to encounter, while maintaining trust with your comrades affects their willingness to share ammo and resources with you. Even after all these years, discovering which of your crew is sus is still a thrilling task. On my way back from an extended Arctic vacation. Uh huh. So what's your name, smartass? McCready. R.J. McCready. Medal of Honor Frontline. Long before Call of Duty was the king of first-person shooters, there was Medal of Honor. And long before it was chasing COD's coattails by trying to reinvent itself, the peak of the franchise was undoubtedly Medal of Honor Frontline. Opening with the storming of Normandy Beach, the feeling is still just as visceral now as it was the first time gamers stepped off that boat back in 2002. Frontline knew what it wanted to be, and it did it immaculately, with no frills or gimmicks, and that's honestly what makes this entry stand the test of time. Gamers are taken back to World War II and sent on well-designed and handcrafted missions that are still compelling today. COD might be king now, but much of what made the COD formula the industry standard started here. Fatal Frame 2, The Crimson Butterfly. I wonder if anyone's here. Mm. <laughs> Horror in video games is a difficult balance to get right. Some, like Silent Hill 2, perfectly nail the tension and psychological dread while exploring the fog-laden town while others simply rely too much on jump scares. Fatal Frame 2 manages to find the harmony of both, echoing films like Juon and The Ring, while forcing the player to confront the encroaching terrors head-on with their camera obscura. While searching for their missing twin sister, players need to wait for the perfect moment to snap a picture of the spirit and hurt them before they can attack you. The fixed perspective keeps players constantly on edge and the near constant silence allows for every creaking floorboard and slamming door to echo throughout the empty village. The Fatal Frame series continues to this day, but the Crimson Butterfly is where the series nailed its formula for terror. You are born for this house. Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix. Back on the PS2, players were spoiled for choice when it came not only to arcade racers, but also Rockstar games. In a time before the company was focused on re-releasing Grand Theft Auto V more times than Skyrim, they created an open-world racing series called Midnight Club, focused on late-night street racing across iconic cities with car customization. Dub Edition Remix acted as pre-DLC DLC, featuring new vehicles, customization options, and almost 30 new licensed music tracks to listen to while you're cruising the streets looking for your next race. Players could even create their own races and change the type of race as well as weather effects they would encounter, adding near-infinite replayability. We haven't seen the Midnight Club series in almost two decades, but its best entry's DNA can be felt in modern Rockstar games, and it's still a wild ride even today. Star Wars Battlefront 2. And we're on the lookout for the slightest hint of treachery. Just like the rest of them, though, he never caught whiff of what was really going on until it was far too late. 
Long before EA tarnished the name possibly forever, Star Wars Battlefront 2 was, and still is, one of the best Star Wars games ever made. Featuring everything modern Battlefront games don't, mainly fun, even with the online servers shut down, Battlefront 2 still offers engaging multiplayer as well as a fully fleshed out single player campaign. With a wealth of iconic vehicles to pilot, characters to control, and even space dogfights, Battlefront 2 was one of the most ambitious Star Wars titles at the time and still holds up due to its variety of gameplay and clear love for the source material. EA just needed to click copy paste and they could have brought Battlefront to an entire new generation of Force users. At least the series' high point is still wildly playable today for those looking for a bit of nostalgia, but also, what could have been? In recognition of our service and loyalty to the Emperor, the 501st were placed under the direct command of Lord Vader. Tony Hawk's Underground. Okay, you're in. Whoa, easy there, Chief. The list's all checked off. What? You signed us both up, right? Well, uh, I mean, I sent my form in, you know. Dude! The Tony Hawk series was riding high after its four main entries, but the developers at Neversoft wanted to change up the formula for the series' fifth outing. You wouldn't think adding a storyline to a skating game would be compelling, but when you're up against a backstabbing little weasel like Eric, you just can't wait to show him up and give him what he deserves. The Tony Hawk games managed to maintain a timeless quality about them due to their responsive controls and infinite replayability, and Underground remains one of the series' best efforts before it began getting too experimental with numerous peripherals and gimmicks. We can always hope for remakes of the Underground entries, but if not, they remain the pinnacle of the series even today. What do you say? One last trip around the neighborhood. Winner takes the tape. Burnout 3 Takedown While the Need for Speed series continues to search for its identity, the Burnout series is left languishing in EA's back catalog, even while they continue to ape the Burnout formula. The third entry in the Burnout series remains one of, if not THE best arcade racer ever made. Zipping around tracks at speeds so fast the scenery blurs, all while trying your best to knock out the competition while they hunt you as well, is still just as heart-pounding now as it was back in 2004. While most modern arcade racers have moved to open worlds, there's something special about memorizing the tracks to shave precious seconds off your time as you just barely avoid barreling full speed into that last turn. Racing games have certainly gotten bigger and more beautiful to look at over the years, but few have managed to capture the arcadey joy of Burnout 3. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips for Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.